Today we are going to talk about the components that appear in many aging papers yet always appear to be lurking in the background with it being acknowledged but largely ignored. That is the extracellular matrix. Now the extracellular matrix being the substance outside of cells is also somewhat lurking in the background but today I will put it centre stage and describe the cool and complex ways in which it contributes to our biology and take some discussion to how the extracellular matrix changes with age. So I've told you in several videos prior how amazing, important and crazy cells are. But before we even knew cells existed, we knew about the structural components that gave tissues their shape and strength. While none of us listening were present at this time point, it has been described that interest of the extracellular matrix, which for simplicity I will now call ECM, began back in the 1700s when it was thought that life even arose by spontaneous generation of these fibres. It was only once the dogma that all cells derive only from cells. So if life comes from cells, where do the ECM components come from? And to backtrack a little more, what actually is the ECM? Well, the ECM isn't just an important structural and mechanical component found outside cells. There are in fact three other main features of the ECM. It is really important for cellular communication with the cells being bound by the ECM components. It is also a dynamic structure. It is not like a staircase in a house that stays fixed in position. It is also moving. Perhaps not as extreme as the moving staircases in Harry Potter, but it does change and turn over. And another interesting thing to note is that the ECM can be a bit sponge-like and is a reservoir for signalling components. Notably, a very important signalling molecule called TGF-beta can be bound by ECM components. So these are just some of the features, but what about the composition? Well. If you think about the ECM, most likely you think about collagen. And great, that's correct. <laughs> collagen is important for the ECM, but there isn't just one collagen, there are many different types of collagen, and there are also many different types of ECM proteins. And which proteins are found where depends not only on which tissue you're looking at, but on which type of ECM structures. To make it simple, there are two main types of ECM structures. There is the matrix-like, called the interstitial matrix ECM, and then there is the basement membrane. The latter, a thin sheet-like structure that is very useful for compartmentalizing tissues and for providing a surface for which cells can bind onto. So to form these different structures, different proteins are required, and to avoid overcomplication, you can find collagen type 1 proteins in the interstitial matrix and collagen type 4 proteins in the basement membrane. But where does the ECM come from? Well, collagens and these ECM proteins are, well, proteins, and therefore are made by cells and then secreted and somehow formed into these most beautiful architectures. So they come from the cell. But since the cell can interact with these ECM proteins, there is actually quite a nice little dynamic reciprocity occurring. The cell influences the ECM and the ECM influences the cells. The cell to ECM direction is slightly easier to understand given that cells make the ECM and can somehow shape it. But how would the ECM control the cell? Well, this question is not new. In fact, there was a review article with this name that came out in 1981. I have cherry picked just a few examples that I've actually read about below here. Firstly, the ECM can influence the cell's replicative capacity. Cells grown on a plastic dish will keep on growing until they run out of space. But if you put those same cells into a collagen matrix, the cell proliferation quickly stops. Another interesting example is how the ECM seems to restrain activity of immune cells, particularly this paper that describes how the ECM limits the innate immune cells, the natural killer cells. Now, one thing I haven't told you here is why these responses happen. Of course, one can speculate, but I think the main message to take from it is that the ECM is actually quite influential and definitely deserves more attention. So given that I study aging, what is known about ECM aging? Aha, well, yes, this is somewhat what I'm trying to find out. And already at the start, 
I told you that things that change with age always seem to find some change that also happens with the ECM. For example, just last week I was doing journal club on this paper, microRNA29 is an important driver of aging related phenotypes, and it turns out this microRNA29 regulates the expression of many ECM proteins. And then there was this paper that came out last year, where in worms they showed how many longevity interventions also impact ECM production. So clearly, changes in the amount of production of ECM components also change with age. And so this is the cell to ECM direction. But what about the ECM to cell direction? Well, it's been reported that the ECM proteins like collagen show increased cross-linking with age, which can make them stiffer. So this most likely, though not so well understood, feeds back and influences the cells. So that brings us to the end, but perhaps still just the beginning of my own personal exploration into this topic. I feel like I've avoided talking about the ECM for a long time, partly because I was avoiding how to draw it, but I think you'll just have to make do with my wavy lines until I can better understand and practice how to draw it. Until then, I hope to continue digging into the complex relationships within tissues and how they change with age.